please give a warm Pennsylvania welcome to Governor Sarah Palin. Thank you so much. Thank you for that warm welcome. Oh, I appreciate you so much, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you. I need to ask you first, Pennsylvania, do you love your freedom? Right on. See, here in Pennsylvania, you get it. You know that the best of our country can be found in the everyday folks who are working hard to get us back on the right track. And you're not afraid to cling to your guns and your religion and your constitution. And you're willing to stand up and to speak out on behalf of America's families. Of course, a family isn't just who you are born into. Family is also who God brings into your life and who you choose. So I was very blessed to get to meet Todd in high school. And then we were blessed with Track and Bristol and Willow and Piper and Trig. And, uh, and then we baby trip coming along too. I just, they're just the best things, of course, that ever happened to me. And our family really is like so many other American families. We support each other through tough times and we celebrate the good times. We pitch in on homework and school projects and sports and chores. And we do have the same ups and downs, the same joys and challenges as any other family. In fact, our family is probably a lot like your family, except maybe Sunday night, you know, we'll have moose burgers and you guys may have, you know, steak. Maybe that's a difference, but the other significant difference, perhaps, uh, is that you can read about some of our ups and downs in the checkout aisle at the grocery store. And uh, I tell you, I admit that that is the hardest part. It's not easy to let others see your everyday average challenges, you know, plastered there on the front page of something. Um, some of those challenges are made up, though, that some of those challenges, you know, I'm reading it going, Never have heard of that one, but okay, I guess that's what we're up to. Strengthening our families can and should be something that we all make a priority because so much is at stake in their success. Families are the building blocks of a society. They're where we learn our values. They're where we are taught right from wrong. And within our families lies the solution to so many of our country's problems. And a lot of folks... A lot of elites in Washington, in the Beltway, and in pop culture, they think that that is all naive. And they think, perhaps, that traditional marriage is a relic of the past and not the cornerstone of our future. They think that perhaps family values can be replaced by secular teachings and family support can be replaced by big government programs. But we know better, and we are making a difference. Folks, you're making a difference. We know that a strong and powerful overreaching government cannot replace a strong and united family. Googling some sites and uh, landed on the Feminists for Life site. It's a great group. The founders there, they knew, and this was on their website, Feminists for Life said, they knew that abortion advocates were hijacking the women's movement. They knew, as you do, that abortion is at odds with basic feminist tenets of non-discrimination and non-violence and justice for all, because true equality doesn't come at anyone else's expense. I am, and I have always been, unapologetically pro-life. I would always counsel someone to choose life, and what my family has experienced over the last three years has really only reaffirmed and strengthened that commitment to the pro-life cause. I know that choosing life may not always be the easy path, but it is the right path. And the timing or the circumstances may not seem perfect, but God sees a way where we cannot, and God does not make mistakes. When I found out at about 12 weeks along that Trig would be born with Down syndrome, and oh my goodness, my world just stopped spinning. I didn't know what what to do. I didn't know how I was going to handle this. I was already, you know, very busy, and had four other kids who needed us, and I was a governor at the time, and um, I 
wasn't even going to tell anybody I was pregnant for as long as possible because I was the first woman governor and I could tell that, you know, some of the sourdoughs up there, I, I was just uh, just waiting to hear what some of their criticism would be. Oh, sure, we go and uh, elect a woman governor and what does she do? She goes off and gets herself pregnant. You know, I'm thinking, oh, no, we just don't need that criticism. So hey, the minute that Trig was born, oh, it was such evidence of God answering prayers because just the minute he was born and they, they put him in my arms and he just kind of melted into me and he looked up at me kind of like, okay, mom, I'm here and this is going to be good. And of course, from that day forward, it has not just been good. It has been so great and Trig truly is the greatest blessing that has ever happened to us. And he's put things in perspective. What I watch in Trig I would like, you know, the rest of the world to, to get to see and experience and, and embrace and then live out. One thing that Trig does, his morning routine, I've shared this before, but his morning routine just still so fascinates me. What this little guy does, he's two years old now, he'll wake up in the morning and he stands up in his crib, he'll, he holds onto the rail of his crib, and he rubs his sleepy little eyes, kind of like he's clearing the vision, you know, rubs the sleep, the blur out. He stands up and he looks around and he starts applauding big smile on his face and he applauds kind of like okay world what you got for me today well, bring it on we're gonna we're gonna handle this and I look at that and I think oh man I need that we need that in our lives may we learn from that that yeah challenges are gonna hit us but let's start the day with that smile on our face and and that applause that great applause that okay we can do this we can handle these things we just have to keep standing up and speaking out for what we believe in and you will notice that as you stand strong on those things that you believe are right for America, you stand, as Reagan used to talk about, with a stiff spine. You're going to see that the spines of others around you will stiffen too. And it will be a beautiful movement as we usher in a culture of life, a pro-family agenda that will strengthen this great country. You keep telling Washington, D.C. that we want to get back to the time-tested truths that made this country great. And that's the belief that government that governs least governs best. Please keep working hard and fighting hard and speaking up and help us get back to the principles that made this country so great, that made this country the exceptional America that it is. Because times may be tough and Washington may have lost its way. But the American dream endures because of men and women like you right here in Pennsylvania. Your proof that what makes America exceptional isn't her faraway politicians. It's her people, it's her families, and the founding principles and the faith that they hold dear. Remember, even though times are hard right now, we still believe that America is still that shining city on a hill. And we know that our best days are yet to come, and there's nothing wrong with America that Americans can't fix. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being part of the solution. Keep working hard. Keep fighting hard for our families, Pennsylvania. And I say God bless you and God bless America. Thank you.